the U.S. economy in 2008. Will it be a happy year or not? Time to go head to head. All right, Charles, the crystal ball. Well, you know, if it's between boom and bust, I'll go with boom. I know the first half of the year is going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. But I think by the second half of the year, all these interest rate cuts will work their way through the system. Obviously, I think the housing market will be a lot better than it's been 2007. The auto market, jobs, unemployment about 4.7 percent. And I think, Peter, inflation is going to be held in check. Oh, not a chance. You know, this 2008 is going to be a really rough year for a lot of people. You know, home equity is going to continue to evaporate. We're going to see rather substantial weakness in home prices. Uh, energy costs are going to keep going up. Food prices are just going to go through the roof next year. Uh, so that's really going to squeeze a lot of people. But so far, inflation's been in check. No, it hasn't. And who says? Look at prices. I mean, look, I mean, gold is up 33 percent this year. We haven't had a year like that since 1979. I mean, look, soybeans went through $12 a bushel for the first time. Then why, then why is the Fed cutting rates and not raising because the, the, because the Fed is foolish. They should be raising them. But the Fed is looking at the economy. We're, go, we're in a recession. The, the Fed is trying to inject more inflation to fight off the recession. But they shouldn't be doing that. They should be raising rates and let the recession run its course instead of making it worse by adding additional inflation to All the right. recession. Gary, you agree with that? Wow, I'm listening to Peter. I think I'm moving out of the country. Uh, <laughs> wow. Look, um, I, I'm in between. I don't think we're going to have a boom. I, I, the consumer's got a problem here. I've been talking about something called the wealth effect. It's been going north for a long time. It's now going south. People feel less wealthy uh, because of the housing. But I don't see any recession. You know, uh, this economy has shown itself throughout so many years and people calling for the end of the world coming. I'm thinking it's not going to be great, probably in the 2%. We may get a bad quarter uh, somewhere in there. But I think overall we're going to be in good shape. I'm looking at productivity. looks great. Interest rates remain low. If interest rates start to spike up because of inflation, then I'll have to uh, think differently. But I'm okay with it. I think we're going to be in fine shape. Jill, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Boom or bust? I'm going to make you pick one. Uh, I'm going to pick boom, but it has to be boom by the end of the year. Can't be, you know, it's not a straight line. And um, I'm actually in both of these guys' camps because I agree with Charles. Slow start ends with a boom. But, you know, the scary thing is I think we're in this very strange period where we're seeing the Fed reflate. It's going to push a lot of prices higher. It's money's going to go into investment assets, could go into big precious metals again. I think that you're right in that way. But I think we're putting off our day of reckoning. And I think that that's why for next year, I think it's boom. You don't and think then, we've already had a day of reckoning? I think we've yeah. had a few in the last couple uh, of months. You know what? No, not at all, actually. Yeah. Not at all, as a matter of fact. We had the shallowest recession in 2001. The market had three horrible years in a bear market, but we didn't have the consumer retrenched. Consumers haven't cleaned up their balance sheets yet. And that is going to happen. I just don't think it's happening next That's year. That's key, Tracy? I think so. You know what? There's a reason people spring clean. There's a reason people purge. The market needs to do the same. I don't know when the R word became a bad word. It's part of the natural business cycle in many, many instances. And who's to say you can't still have growth during a, a, a period of time like this? You know, people are... are and I think the media has a lot to do with it. They're making people scared. If we go into a recession, you're going to have to move out of your home and live in your car. It's not that bad. You know? Your 401k will still survive. You it. and I will, Charles. Right, yeah, Walsh, exactly. You know. <laughs> we'll move into his car. Gary. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to move out of the country with Gary if things get much worse. But uh, you know what? Yeah, I do agree in a certain sense that you know, we are so afraid of recessions. The last two recessions were very, very short-lived. And then the, after those recessions, we really took off in an, as an economy. Also, I think, you know what? Let's say you're right and we are in a recession. And I think by the time we figure it all out, we'll probably be yeah. out of it anyway. But, Great. you know what, I just think with employment as strong as it's been, productivity, you know, I just see so many great things happening. Also, guys, listen, this year has proven that our system works. Yep. Everyone looks at the negatives, but I look at the fact that our market was still up this year and our country Charles. grew Charles. In, face, in the face of the yeah. most disastrous yeah. Yeah. housing market well, since the Great Depression. Charles, first of all, the reason that that recession in 01, 02 was so shallow was because Alan Greenspan inflated the housing bubble to, to try to minimize it. And now we have to deal with the effects of what he did to postpone that day of reckoning. Now we're looking at something far worse. And we're going to talk about the stock market up. Sure, it was up in terms of dollars, which depreciated. It priced in gold, the Dow lost 25% of its value this year. U.S. stocks are losing value. You can't be fooled by inflation and, and phony and value just dollar. Carrie. Let me just add to Peter's point here. You know, my biggest problem with this Fed is uh, they, there's been a problem of excessive liquidity out there, and they're trying to fix the problem with excessive liquidity, and that's why we're seeing gold shoot up. My big issue, that, that God bless it, that the bond market has cooperated. If the bond market start, starts to not cooperate and interest rates start to spike, then we're in trouble, not only in the economy, but also in the market itself, that's and I'm big, watching that very closely. That's the big surprise for next year. I think the big bubble in the, the Treasury market is going 
going to burst, and we're going to see a big increase in interest rates, and that's just going to you know throw gasoline on the fire. Excess liquidity. He's yeah. really not fun, you know that? Yeah. Say, that's not <laughs> Dr. Do. Uh, now, you know what? I think that, look, the, the reality is I think we're kind of all in agreement. When you throw a lot of liquidity into the system, it, it goes somewhere. It went into dot-com stocks and it went into the housing bubble. Uh, my, my, my guess is that this, the, the reflation and this liquidity is going to go back into the market. And I think, Peter, you're right. We are going to have a day of reckoning. I just don't think it's going to happen next year with the Fed cutting so aggressively. All right. Well, Perfect. we're going to leave it there, guys. But we have a lot more to talk about as the near approaches. Hide all sharp objects from Peter Schiff, guys. <laughs>